The Little Red Ribbon by Wade Bradford Rachel had never been on a school bus before, but she was ready. She had her lunchbox, her backpack, and her mother's gift, a little red ribbon tied up in her hair. Thanks to her special red bow, she wasn't a bit nervous as she waited in line with the other children. And she wasn't even a little bit jittery when the big yellow school bus squeaked and sputtered to a stop. Maybe she was just a tiny bit scared as the bus clanked open, but when the bus driver gave her a smile and said, Welcome aboard! All the butterflies in her tummy fluttered away. Rachel knew it would be a good day. She sat in the very front seat, next to a boy who was also nervous, jittery, and more than a tiny bit scared. It was his first time on a school bus, too. He was worried about the what-ifs. What if the bus gets a flat tire? What if we go down the wrong road? What if we never find our way to school? So Rachel shared a secret. She said, My mother gave me this to keep the worries away. She untied the bow so that she and the boy could both hold on to the little red ribbon. They looked out the window as the world rolled by, and soon they were at their school. Thank you, bus driver, said Rachel. You're welcome, little one, said the bus driver, and you can call me Mrs. Grace. Have a great day. I will, Mrs. Grace. But Rachel did not have a great day. On her way to class, when she was just about to tie a bow in her hair, a mean gust of wind swept the ribbon into the air. It danced back and forth in the breeze, just out of reach. The ribbon twisted and tumbled in the wind, and then it was gone, nowhere in sight. During class, while the other children listened to the teacher, Rachel just looked out the window and wondered where her ribbon could be. She looked for it at recess and at lunchtime, and even after the last school bell rang and the children lined up for the bus. Hurry on up and climb aboard, said Mrs. Grace, but even the bus driver's smile could not cheer her up. Rachel sat in the very back of the bus and thought about her lost ribbon. Then she closed her eyes and fell asleep. When Rachel woke up, the rest of the children were gone. Outside the window, the world that rolled by was strange and different. Up in front, Mrs. Grace, who seemed to have forgotten all about Rachel, was driving to the place where the buses go to settle in for the night. Rachel began to cry. And even though the bus squeaked, sputtered, and clanked, Mrs. Grace heard her. Oh, dear me, said Mrs. Grace. You must have fallen asleep and missed your stop. Let's get you home, little one. Mrs. Grace turned the bus around, and soon Rachel began to recognize the neighborhood around them. You had a rough day, said Mrs. Grace. Tomorrow will be better. I don't think so, Rachel said quietly. I lost my ribbon. I'm not so sure about that, said Mrs. Grace, as the bus came to rest at Rachel's corner. Mrs. Grace pointed up to a tree, where there was a little red ribbon fluttering in the branches. Looks like it's not so lost after all, said the bus driver, as she handed Grace the ribbon. Thank you, Mrs. Grace. Goodbye, little one. Years went by and Rachel became a teacher at the very same school. One afternoon, she waved goodbye to her students as they stepped onto the bus. Then she placed her books in her backpack and tightened the red bow in her hair. It was a windy day, and she didn't want the ribbon to blow away again. On the way home, she saw an old woman standing on the sidewalk in her slippers. It was Mrs. Grace. Her eyes were filled with worries and what-ifs. 
To her, the world seemed strange and different. Hello, Mrs. Grace, Rachel said gently. This was not the first time she had seen her like this. Do you remember me? Mrs. Grace did not. She backed away afraid. Then Rachel untied her bow and showed Mrs. Grace her ribbon. The woman's eyes no longer looked so lost after all. Mrs. Grace took hold of the little red ribbon, and together they walked home.